Hello and welcome to the channel and welcome to a brand new video this time it's a little bit different uh, the reason I'm doing this video is because the video I got planned for today went quite badly wrong um, I was doing a well I'm not going to tell you what I was doing but it was a two-tone job black and yellow and to be honest with you it didn't work out the way it should have done excuse me a second just want to um move that forward a bit because i think it's affecting it um yeah it didn't work out the way it did so i didn't have time to get it done for to for wednesday's upload because i i do my videos uh basically one a week it takes me roughly about a week to do one uh, i start on the uh when i upload on the wednesday i normally start on the thursday and work my way through and hopefully get it done by the Tuesday night, edit it and upload it Wednesday morning first thing. Uh, that's why sometimes I'll do simple models with single colours on them because I've, I've, I've got stuff on during the week. Uh, the reason I do that is I haven't got a laptop, I haven't got a PC, uh, anything like that or a printer. So it's all done on my phone and my tablet. I've started using my tablet now as a backup for videos. Um, so that's the reason why that is. So what I'm going to do today is start a beginner's guide to die cast restoration. Now, uh, a couple of people asked me about doing this and uh, I'm a bit reluctant because it's a sticky subject. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. Um, you know, one person does it completely different to another person and so on and so forth so that's why i'm going to call it the beginner's guide not a how to because i am not going to tell you how to do it uh because everybody will find their own way of doing things but this will be a guide as to what i've learned over the two years that i've been doing this and if i can pass any bit of information on which will help a beginner then i've done what, what i set out to do because there's a lot of us restorers out there, we do it, and sometimes we tend to forget that there are people out there who are just starting, and it's easy, it's an easy thing to fall into when you start restoring, and you get the hang of it, and you're doing it, you're trundling along, and you tend to forget that there's people who don't know what you're talking about. You know, uh, how do I start? What do I do with this? Where do I get this from? You know, so hopefully this series of videos will uh, give you some more insight so there's a lot of old hands out there people who restore uh, and don't make videos and, and they put them on these facebook social media sites there's a lot of people who don't even do that they just restore for the fun of it for themselves that's fantastic so there's a lot of people out there who's a lot more talented and better uh, more expertise than i have but I just want to give back to some of the beginners who look on YouTube to find out how to do certain things or how to even start. That's why I started by going through YouTube channels, looking at people's videos and saying, oh, yeah, this is how you do that. And searching videos to find out uh, any, any creator or who would give me the information that I needed. You know, and sometimes I have to go quite a few videos to, to find out, to find somebody who was going to actually show you what you need to know. So, anyway, that being said, and I don't want to waffle on for too long. I don't want to make this video a long, boring thing. I mean, you've got to sit and look at this. You know, I mean, it's not great, I know. So get yourself a cup of tea or, or a drink or whatever you want. You might need a bit stronger. Uh, and we'll start right at the beginning. And I mean right at the beginning. We're not drilling holes, we're not cleaning screens, we're starting right at the beginning. And it is, the, to, for me, the beginning is buying your die cast, buying your, buying your first die cast or your first half dozen or whatever you want to do. So that's what we're going to start with. And we're going to start with buying off eBay, social media, and then we'll uh, go on to where do I get my supplies from or where's the best place to get your supplies from. Because that's one of the questions that I get asked frequently. Where do I get tyres from? Where do I get decals from? Where do I get my spare parts? Yeah. So we'll start off with eBay. Because that's 
the place that I know where I get most of my stuff from because I live in a quite a rural area and I don't live in a big city and so pickings are very slim on car boot sales, charity shops, so on and so forth. So I had to rely on um, eBay for, for my stuff. So look at on eBay. A couple of things to look for, look, look out for. You've got to do your research. Yeah, that's one of the main things, is doing your research. Now, everybody knows eBay. They know how it works. If you go down to the die car section in the, the collector's part of the bottom, you've got these die car section. Uh, you, you've got your cars up. You've got your vehicles up. You're having a look. Now, things to watch out for. Look at all the photos closely. Zoom in. Have a look and see if the seller has put more than one photograph on. I tend not to buy off one photograph because it doesn't show me what the other side's like, doesn't show me the back, stuff like this. And, and there's nothing in the description. I tend to pass that one by. Now, a good thing is your watch list. Your watch list, to me, is one of your important tools. Because when you're buying off eBay, you've usually got six or seven days or more uh, before the auction ends. So I like to go through, pick out the, the cars or vehicles or whatever it is that I'm interested in. And I put them on my watch list. And that gives me time to go through the suppliers and sellers that I've got to find out how much the spare parts are going to cost me to complete that vehicle. Yeah, because that's important because you might be willing to pay eight or nine pound or something and then you've got a further six or seven pounds to pay on spare parts so that makes that model quite expensive but if you carry on looking maybe a week later a fortnight later or even a day later you might find the same vehicle in a better condition than the previous one you were looking at yeah so you know you've got to it swings and roundabouts it swings and roundabouts. But the most important thing is a watch list. Get them on your watch list, excuse me. Get them on your watch list and go through your sellers on your spare parts and uh, add up how much it's going to cost you or how much you're prepared to pay to restore that vehicle to its original times, like the windscreens, doors, jeweled headlights, tyres, uh, aerials, you name it, okay? The other thing, I'll get that out of the way first. The other thing is, do not try and attempt to do, if you're a beginner, leave these things alone. The James Bond, gold one. And these. That's my suggestion, and my suggestion only. Some of the Jerry Andersons. Because to be honest with you, if you want to enjoy the hobby and you start doing something like this, and by the time you paid out for all the spare parts and you get it all apart, you forgot how it goes back together again, you're making a bit of a shambles of it, you're naffed off, and that's it. Goes in a bin, I'm giving up, I'm not doing no more. So don't do that. Start off simple. Really, really start off simple. And it's you'll soon get the hang of it and you'll soon work your way up. Something simple. Something like this, this fair line, dinky fair line, or it could be a corgi, whatever you want, whatever your preference is. Single colour, no opening doors, no opening bonnet, no opening boot, simple set of tyres. This is the sort of thing that I'd be looking at to start with, because there's nothing fantastically hard about this. You're drilling the base out. You're stripping the paint off, you're giving it a coat of paint of your choice, cleaning the screen, putting it back together again. That will give you more satisfaction than messing about with a James Bond car for three weeks, losing springs and stuff like this. So to build up your confidence, this sort of thing, or even a little mini, little mini like this. Yeah, no jeweled headlights again, straightforward. A little bit of hand painting around there, do you practice with the brush and your details on the front? This sort of thing. That's what you need to be looking at. Uh, there's any number of simple cars out there. 
you can you can do okay it's quite it's, it's quite simple there that's what i recommend you start with something as simple as that or some of the older dinkies with no windows in them and no interiors you get those as well but they might be a little bit pricey because the die cast market is going up slightly now at the minute and things are prices are a bit crazy but something like that start with that yeah and like i say on your watch list keep them on there you can have it up to i think i think ebay's expanded their watch list now so you can have quite a lot on there uh so you can always go back to it and you've got that like some six eight ten days to make your mind up what you want to do before you pull the trigger on it uh the other thing is when you're looking on uh, ebay for stuff uh, you need to be looking very close at the pictures, like I said before, uh, checking out for broken door pillars uh, and the window posts, looking out whether it's got a bonnet, whether it's got a boot, um, and you're looking out for cracked glass, broken glass or non-existent glass in some cases, uh, and stuff like this, because all these little pieces add up. If you're doing something like this, this horse box, yeah, I'd be looking to make sure it's got the door at the back and the side door in there. I've got it, it's in there, but there's the lug broken off this. I knew that when I bought it. But you see, because this part and this part are quite pricey. And uh, depending where you get it on, there's obviously a little bit of quality as well. Um, so this for me, it's got no glass in it. It's a two-tone paint job. All it wants basically is the tyres uh, and decals and me to fix that door so this for me is okay not a problem yeah but if you want to buy one of these make sure that if you can get one keep searching they won't disappear get one with the doors on if you can okay uh, because there's lots out there these were toys these are made by the thousands so you know when you see people say oh it's a rare one not necessarily it uh, it'll be rare if it's a rare color a one-off colour from the factory, but nine times out of ten, these are kids' toys. They've made a lot of them, so they are out there. Just bide your time. Don't buy the first thing that you see. That's important. Don't buy the first thing that you see. You want to go on there and say, oh, yeah, I want one of them. Go buy it. Bang. You paid, like, 15 quid for it. Yeah, and then you've got another £4 postage. And then you get it back, and you find that's missing. This is missing. That's missing. That's going to cost you 25 quid to put it right. Think about what you're doing and go through, like I say, check all the pictures, get as many of the pictures as you can, close up, zoom up, have a look. And if there's something you fancy and it's really badly overpainted and you're not sure what's missing and what's not missing, then Google Images is good. Get the car up, get it on Google Images and you'll see pristine ones in there, uh, which the collectors have got or whatever, and you'll see what the colours are supposed to be and you'll see what is missing that'll give you an idea and then you can go back and have a look and say yeah that's missing an headlight you know that's missing a back part of a back bumper that should have an override on it you know that sort of thing you know it you know, it it, uh, it does pay it seriously does pay to have a look right i'm not going to try and waffle on this too long i know i can get a bit carried away because uh, i'm quite passionate about this and uh Anyway, right, next thing. Don't overlook other people's restorations that people have done because sometimes you can get a good little bargain, yeah? Now, look at this here. This Sunbeam Rapier, dinky one, yeah? Now, to buy that in a poor state, they're sometimes like eight quid, something like that, yeah, in some places. So then you've got to buy the windows, then you've got to buy the tyres and stuff like that, and you've got to paint it and stuff like this. This one I got... For a fiver. Now it's got a brand new window. It's got a brand new steering wheel. It's got a set of brand new tyres. Yeah. I mean, there's been money there straight away. And it's got both headlights. All right. So the painting is not fantastic on it. Um, but I can strip that and repaint it. And I save myself a lot of money. So don't dismiss other people's restorations. Yeah, that people are selling on eBay. Because they can always take the paint off. And repaint it the way you want it done. But at least you know that it's got all the parts. Which is good. So that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, what have I got here? 
something else to show you. Zephyrs, these sort of things. Now this thing has got all four opening doors. It's got an opening boot, got an opening bonnet, which should have an engine in it. Okay. This also should have door cards in it. I think this one has got door cards in it. These little door cards here, you'll get, you know, this is what I'm saying. You'll look at uh, some on eBay and you think, oh yeah, okay. And if the doors are open, just check to see if the door cards are there. Yeah, because these are quite pricey to buy door cards. Uh, so if you look on ones that are on Google Images, and then flick back to your eBay on your watch list and check to see if it's got door cards in it. Okay, because otherwise it's an added expense. Uh, and an engine. This one didn't come with an engine. Uh, and this one also has got a broken bumper at the back. You see that? It's broken there. So when I looked at it, I thought, yeah, okay. Uh, I'll buy a replacement. I'll buy a second car. Yeah, because sometimes as well, it's cheaper to buy a parts car. Like I do in the real world, buy a parts car. All right. And some of the parts cars, you can get all the bits you need to make one good one. So with this one, I bought a parts car which had a missing door, which I didn't need that anyway. It had the full complete back bumper. That saves me about six quid plus postage. It's got all the door cards, plus it had the engines. I took the engine out of here, actually. It's in the box, but it had an engine with it. So that saved me a good bit on, on parts. And it had, uh, did this have a wheel? Yeah. I've took one tire off there, but it had all the tires. Okay. So I've saved myself some money there. So it's always bearing in mind a parts car. You have to do a bit of study and you have to go through and see what see what's what, you know, and uh, have a look. But that's what you need to look for. Because this one's got dual LED lights there, but it's also got little jewels in the back. I don't know if you can see that. It's got little jewel, little square jewels in there. Okay, there's one missing, it's dropped out, it's in a the tub there. But yeah, so they, these are all added expense. So that, that's my take on buying off eBay. And the same, same with social media. Uh, sometimes social media, you can ask for more photos, ask for more photos, yeah? Okay, because that's what I need to do. Do as much as you can, visually looking at it, through your eBay or your social media. And then if you fancy pulling the trigger on it, you go for it. So that leads me on to things like um, spare parts. Now spare parts, there are, I've got a list here of the big three. I call them the big three, okay? I mean, I don't, I don't know, I mean, I, I'm, I might sound a bit stupid, but I don't know how to do links. So what I'll do, I'll just hold this piece of paper up okay and i will tell you the big three what i consider to be the big three and that's these people here you've got model supplies dot com now there they sell virtually all the bits you'll need for your die cars cars right based in england okay and then you've got this one model car parts i think they're based out of holland Okay, now he's got a, a comprehensive list of car parts as well. Okay, and the bottom one is recovery dot, at recoverytoys.com, and they're out of Australia. Okay, so if I just hold that up there, you should be able to read that or pause it or whatever. Okay, but they're, the, they're what I consider the big three. If they haven't got it, you're going to struggle to get a parts. Okay, um, then you've got one of this is the guy that I, I use a lot uh, is model decals and spares dot com. Model decals and spares dot com. There, that's Cliff. Okay, and then there's the uh, black square decals dot com. They, they do all your decals, black square dot com decals. Okay, now they're the ones that I've just put down on there because otherwise there'll be the, the list will be enormous. If you go on to eBay, go on to your diecast 
toy section, scroll down to your spare parts. And what I do is I look at the spare parts, what they've got on offer. And if I see something on there, like a car boot for a Vauxhall Viva, uh, I'll look on it. And then I always go on to seller's other items. Yeah. And see what they've got else they've got for sale. And if you'll find that they do a majority of um, spare parts for die cars, cars uh, scroll down the list, say, oh, yeah, that's good. Then save that seller. Save it. And then you'll go down a bit further and you'll see another seller who's selling tyres. So you have a look what he's got. See what he's got on his on offer on the on his on his eBay. And you know, you'll find tires on there. You think, right, he's got a good supply of tires. They're not so bad. I'll save that seller. Okay. So you eventually you'll find you've got a list of sellers, maybe eight or nine sellers, which you will use on a regular basis. If the big three, sometimes the big three. They get busy and they can't, they don't deliver within a said time. So I usually go for a smaller company who deliver in a couple of days. Yeah, that's that's entirely up to you. But sometimes you have to shop around a bit. Some of the small sellers, they don't sell everything. You might have to get one part of one and one part of another. Uh, same with the decals. So it's a case of shopping around. Uh, there are some companies out there will sell tyres, uh, fours and sixes. I personally wouldn't do that. I usually go for 25s and 50s uh, quantities because otherwise, you know, what's the point if, if you're buying four tyres plus poaches every time? It's expensive. Try and buy a bigger, 25, 30, 50, 100, whatever, you know, depending. And the different sizes, be careful, different sizes, okay? I mean, normal, normal standard tyres, uh, smooth ones and treaded uh, on average would say it would be 15 millimeter outside diameter on your on your dinkies and your corgis uh, treaded I always keep a 15 millimeter smooths in and I also keep 15 millimeter treaded in uh, your big super toys like your tankers and so on and so forth with the gray tires uh, 20 millimeter grays 20 millimeter blacks uh, but then you'll get on to something like um, the Dinky um, Bedfords. Some of them, they have 17 mil tyres. So, you know, do a bit of research on your Google and have a look. And have a look at people who've restored them. They normally tell you what size tyres. I try and tell you what tyres I put on a vehicle. So that the person who's watching it will know what tyres to go for. Yeah, sometimes I don't. I, I forget to put it on. But nine times out of ten, I do. Um, because otherwise there's no point trying to put a tyre on a car and it's not going to fit because the bloody wheel arches are in the way. Uh, things like Minis, uh, the small Triumph Heralds, they all 12 millimetre. So you've got, you've got, you've got a bit of a range going on there. So be wary of that. Look on your eBay, look on your, and save your sellers. And then you can always revert back to them, especially when you're looking on eBay, like I said earlier, for, You've got things on your watch list and then you can quickly refer to your seller. Yeah, he's got one of them. He's got he's got three things that I want. I can get it, combine postage, bang, I'll pull the trigger on that car on eBay. Yeah, so that's how I work. I always look at it, study the pictures, a quick Google images. Yeah, okay, it's this, this, this and this. Go through my sellers, right? So-and-so's got all them parts that I need. And I'll get a combined postage, bang, I'll, I'll buy it, yeah? The other thing is on, on eBay is also watching your, watch the postage prices, yeah? I know eBay and PayPal take money off the sellers. It's not their fault, yeah? But at the end of the day, you don't want to be paying extortion at postage prices unless it's coming from abroad, yeah? I mean, there's a vast, it goes anywhere from £3.20 up to £5.60, for one car now to be honest with you i look at anything under four pound yes anything over four pound i'll pass it by that's my personal opinion i'm not telling you to do that you know i'm just saying this is how i, I how i personally work okay um so this being the first video on this on this um can i say 
this series of videos. Now, hopefully, out there, it's made a bit of a difference to a beginner. Now, please, I mean, I've got pretty pretty broad shoulders. <laughs> and if on the comments you want to say, Martin, that was a load of crap, don't do any more, then fine. Or you say, yeah, that was helpful, I'll do that. Or we need a bit more of this and we need a bit more of that, that's fine. But, you know, I'm, I'm helping you guys out. So go easy, mate. You know, no swearing, uh, no telling me to off and all that. You know, just just take it easy, right? Take it easy. So I'm going to end it here. If there's anything else that I've missed that you want to know, you can put it in the comments because I do read all the comments and I do try and get back to you on the... On the uh, uh, trying to get back to you within the week. Usually I have a deadline of get it all done by Sunday, depending on the amount of comments. So, well, I've, I've waffled on enough. My throat's dry. I need a cup of tea. Uh, so hopefully we'll do another one at some point. Okay, so bye for now. And look after yourselves. And best wishes to all of you. Thanks very much. Bye for now.